News at Noon starts right now. This is KGW News at Noon. We're looking at a national emergency because we have a national emergency. Declaring an emergency on our border to build a wall is probably the worst public policy idea I've heard in about 10 years. No sign of compromise ahead of the president's speech tonight. It's his first primetime address from the Oval Office, and he's bringing his case for a border wall directly to the American people. But Democrats, they are fighting back. Hello, everyone. I'm Brenda Braxton. Thank you for joining us. Expect the president to argue that the crisis at the U.S. border with Mexico requires a wall. Now, as you listen to this story, you can vote in our viewer voice poll. NBC's Tracy Potts reports from Washington. Tonight, President Trump's salesman in chief convincing America why he wants $5.6 billion to build a wall at the Mexico border. What I expect the president will do tonight is explain to the American people that we have a humanitarian and security crisis at our southern border. 60,000 people are now attempting to come into our country illegally every month. That's more than 2,000 a day. He's threatening to declare a national emergency to get the money if Congress won't approve it. I worry greatly about the total inability of Congress to do anything should the president grab that kind of national emergency power. It's already horrific for federal workers caught in the middle of a showdown over funding the wall. This is day 18 of the partial government shutdown, now tied as the second longest in history. If it continues, 51,000 TSA employees won't get paid Friday. We work for our money, just like everybody else. It's, it's tough to wake up and have your wife reassure you that everything's gonna be all right. President Trump says he feels their pain, but insists most federal employees and the public are with him on this. He'll speak to the public tonight and visit the border Thursday. You've likely heard about the so-called blue flu. TSA workers are calling in sick because they're not getting paid during the shutdown. Well, today, two members of Congress met with workers at PDX in a show of support. KGW's Tim Gordon is live at the airport this afternoon. And Tim, it's not just the TSA, but air traffic controllers, too. Right, Brenda, and both groups, as you know, are considered essential employees. That means they're supposed to show up to work even if there's no paycheck, and it seems here they are. U.S. Representative Suzanne Bonamici and Kurt Schrader stood with the union leader for TSA workers in Portland, saying enough is enough with the government shutdown. So, uh, here in Portland and across Oregon and across the country, uh, this is unacceptable that our, our federal workers are being told not to work or they're being told to work without pay. There are about 400 TSA workers here. The politicians from Oregon heard some of their stories today. One, a TSA agent who's selling their plasma to make ends meet. Another, whose spouse is in the Coast Guard and also not getting paid. But in Portland, they say there's no sick out. We have very dedicated people who are coming here, who come, still come to work. The fear is that as this continues, they may have to go seek other employment. Uh, my hat's off to these men and women willing to come to work with no pay, no light at the end of the tunnel, thanks to the president. Uh, it should be a bipartisan exercise to fund the government. In just hours, President Trump plans to tell the nation why he's standing firm on the shutdown for border security. The Democratic Congress members say the security debate can continue without a harmful shutdown. The House has already passed uh, the bills to fund the government, to keep the government open. I hope they take those up in the Senate. We need to end this immediately. Families are being affected. Abonamichi and Schrader flew back from here, PDX, to Washington this morning. And they say they're taking those stories back, hoping to convince the U.S. Senate and the president to open up the government. Brenda, back to you. All right, Tim, thank you. And we do want to remind you, do not forget to vote in our live poll today. The question, should President Trump declare a national emergency to pay for that border wall? That would empower him to start construction without congressional consent. If you'd like to weigh in, press the vote tab on the KGW News app or go to KGW.com vote. 
We're also tracking some wild weather in Portland's West Hills this morning. Strong winds toppled trees and power lines there on Old Germantown Road. The street was closed for several hours as crews worked to repair those power lines, but the road has since reopened. And there is plenty of snow in the gorge. Take a look at our sky cam from the Oregon Veterans Home in the Dalles. There is a winter weather advisory right now. KGW's Pat Doris is on his way to the Dalles, but he stopped to chat with us in Hood River. So Pat, you're seeing some traffic issues out there. Right, Brenda. Well, I just heard from ODOT that there's a semi that is jackknifed. It's closed the westbound lanes about 10 miles east, so 10 miles this side of Cascade Locks. It's also closed one of the eastbound lanes going into the gorge. And the cleanup may not happen until a couple of hours from now. It's an Albertson's truck. Unclear whether it's weather related, but it is certainly causing a backup that is going to stretch for miles. Here in Hood River, there's kind of a icy, rainy mix falling. I think my weather friends call that grapple. If you look across the Columbia, you can see snow on the rooftops over there. But uh, as far as downtown, really no problems. Out on Interstate 84 earlier today, the story was wind and rain. We came across a modular home headed east into the gorge. Hopefully it made it because it looked to me kind of like a kite as we went by. Travelers will also notice a good deal of spray on their windshields as they're passed by semis. Just part of winter driving around here. I checked with the public works departments for both the Dalles and Hood River. So far, they said there are no problems, which is good and of course to be expected. Folks out here used to winter weather. It's part of the fun of living here in the gorge. But part of the fun uh, also sometimes includes nasty delays on I-84, which is what's happening right now. Brenda? Yeah, we appreciate the update, letting us know what's going on out there. Pat, thank you much. Meteorologist Rod Hill has been following the east winds, the snow, the rain. You've got a little <laughs> bit of everything today. You know, that advisory that you mentioned, Brenda, that's set right now to expire at 10 p.m. this evening. Now, that would bet on temperatures overnight actually going up. I would say we're going to be watching the weather in the gorge very carefully, at least into tomorrow morning. And then confidence is really high. Temperatures will start to rise at that time, if not overnight tonight. I do want to point out on the radar, so follow me. We're going through the Columbia River Gorge. It's mostly rain all the way into Hood River right now at low elevations. And then you get more of that mix, even over I-84 into the Dalles. You just, uh, we just showed you rather this picture from the Oregon Veterans Home in the Dalles. I do want to show you the temperature, 32 degrees. And by the way, the accumulations, that fell first thing early this morning. There really hasn't been anything added since about oh, 8 a.m. And the same thing, this is just in the hills above uh, downtown Hood River, Cathedral Ridge Winery. You can see the vineyard right there. And about an inch of snow on the bench, it looks like. They had about one to two inches fall in the hills, but again, nothing has been added since early this morning. All right, part two of our story, the wind. There we go. Crown Point hit 81 miles per hour about an hour ago. Wow, east winds. 37 gusting right now in Troutdale. And these winds will stay pretty consistent all the way into the day tomorrow. We've got some varied winds. There's Newport East at 17 right now. Forecast model keeps the east winds going for you folks in Gresham, for example, the rest of today. Notice the absence of much wind, no color on the map down around Salem. I play this into tomorrow. See how the colors fill in. Tomorrow morning, the wind direction picks up from the south. Everybody up and down the I-5 corridor tomorrow will see gusts of 30, maybe a 40 mile per hour wind. Pretty wet day tomorrow with rain picking back up as well. For the rest of today, 45 degrees right now. Pretty much a steady temperature throughout this afternoon. Showers, however, may actually start to become fewer in number, at least for today. Brenda? All right, thank you, Rod. And you can stay up to date on any weather or traffic alerts on KGW.com or our KGW News app. A funeral service was held this morning for Jasmine Barnes, the seven-year-old girl who died in a drive-by shooting in Texas. Family and friends packed this church in Houston to pay their respects before attending a memorial service. Two suspects are in custody. Eric Black Jr. charged with capital murder is being held without bail. Barnes's family attorney and NBC affiliate KPRC have both identified the shooter as Larry Woodruff. He has not been charged in the case. Investigators say Jasmine was not the intended target. So it's our understanding that this was a case of mistaken identity, um, that they fired in the vehicle believing that um, it was in retaliation for an altercation that had happened earlier in the night. 
Barnes's mother was also hit by gunfire, but she survived. She says her daughter was exuberant, loved to sing and dance, and dreamed of being a teacher. We now know the name of the man shot and killed by police in southeast Portland. On Sunday, officers say 36-year-old Andre Gladden refused to leave an apartment near Market Street and 96th Avenue. According to detectives, an officer used his taser, but it apparently wasn't effective. Police haven't said exactly what happened, except that the officer fired his gun at Gladden and he later died at the hospital. Take a look at this damage. A tractor drove straight over this ATM in Hillsboro. This is the Wells Fargo branch on Northeast Cornell and Butler near Orenco Station. Police say there were two guys and they got away in a U-Haul, which was later found sitting in a parking lot about a mile and a half away. Police say they don't know how much money the pair got away with. An arrest after a manhunt in southeast Portland shut down part of a neighborhood for hours. Police say they found Andrew Hernandez in the basement of a home he broke into on southeast Glenwood Street early this morning. They say Hernandez was armed and threatened to hurt officers, leading to a chase around 9.30 last night. The chase ended when Hernandez crashed into a car and then ran away. This noon, he's in jail, charged with assault and